You want the best free way to play D&D online? Well, that's what we're about to talk about. If you're looking for more of that in-person feel, or you'd rather be playing in person, but because of circumstances you have to be playing online, you will probably really like this tool. Some of the advantages with it, super easy to learn, completely free, and but that's mostly what you're looking at. It's free and really easy to use, uh, and it works really well. Some things that this will not do, it will not store character sheets. So you're going to have to use whatever you would typically use in person. If you're already using D&D Beyond, that's a great option. If you like doing paper character sheets and you've got your adventures written out, great. Uh, it also does not do voice and video, so you're still going to have to use like Discord or Zoom or whatever way you use to communicate. So some of you may already know what's probably going to be in the title, but I'm talking about Owlbear Rodeo. All right, so when you head over to owlbear.rodeo it will take you to this page and you could use owlbear.rodeo it works just fine but i like using the new fancy stuff so we're gonna go over owlbear rodeo 2.0 beta or owlbear.app is the url so the first thing that you're gonna want to do hit play for free and set up your account this is a brand new account. I've done absolutely nothing on this account. I just created it. And so with the free one, you can have up to two rooms at a time. Not really that big of a deal for most people, probably. I should note there are additional subscribe. You can subscribe and pay to get some additional functionality. So you can get some more storage, more rooms, things like that. You really don't have to. I'm not going to. You might want to come down here and set up some of the kind of add-ons, mods, if you will, uh, to the game. So do you want dice? Do you want an initiative tracker? Do you want status rings and character and monster tokens that are already made? And maybe even spell effects and maps, and I kind of like all of these, except for sticky notes. Uh, you can even look through some of the extensions. Excuse me, if you click here. Uh, so you can see some stuff that they have on here. You can add colored rings you just click the copy install link all right hit the back button a couple times <laughs> after you copy the link navigate back over to this screen add extension paste that link yeah um i don't think there's anything else that i really care to add to. so let's create a room and let's turn on all of these things and let's uh so you can randomize the name but you can't put a specific one and you can randomize the background not that big of a deal. And then we're just going to create it. First thing that it's going to want you to do is upload a map, create a scene. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so let's do this from a new map. And uh, this is a blue, the blue water tavern. Because there's something I want to show with this that's also kind of cool. This map is really hard to load into a VTT if you want the squares to align. Because they do this thing where it technically only goes to this black line so then they have extra stuff and it confuses computers this lets you relatively easily size readjust it to where you can kind of crop out some of the edge there uh, and you could zoom in and then look and see oh, okay i need to adjust this just a hair and how's this look still a little bit big is that going to be too small so i'm just going to zoom in random places and see how uh, how it looks all right, and that is actually pretty, pretty good. So that process is is very easy and simple when you're aligning it. When you do it for the very beginning, you just import that. And now whenever you load up a scene, you pull that map in, it will be aligned. And if you pull in a map that doesn't have that border, as soon as you pull it in, it should automatically be aligned. If it's not, well, here I'll show you how easy it is to align a map without that border if it doesn't automatically do it for you. All right, so this one has very prominent squares. It will be very easy if this is not aligned properly. So let's just save this as whatever it shows up as. And then you just need to count how many squares across it is. So that is 30 squares across. And look at that, you can just count it across and it is all lined up absolutely perfectly. Once you've loaded in your scene, you can click on one of them. Uh, if you want to delete one of your scenes, the three dots is how you do that, but we're going to click open scene. So once you're into the scene, you can pull in different tokens, some of the different maps. So the maps are here. Um, but let's talk really quick about pulling in data. You can click these four squares down here uh, and you can load in different maps. So you can just add a map and 
add a new image, you can add different folders. So you can create a backgrounds folder, a town tavern folder with different taverns, however you wanna order it. You can have different props. These work just fine for me. All right, so if you have some tokens though that you wanna pull in, um, you can select both of them, you can pull them in, and now my player's tokens are in there. And they should pop up here, so when you go to drag them in, they are there. And you can do the same thing if your characters have any sort of mounts, anything like that. Uh, some other thing is if you pull in a blank screen like this, you can just pull in, uh, you can pull in the background images like they are tiles, and you can pull more images in and stack it next to it. To move it, you'll have to double click it, hit the unlock button, and then you can drag it around, and then you can lock it in place if you'd like. You can even, you can resize them if you want to make them bigger or smaller. And you can pull in different bad guys if you want to pull in some undead or maybe a fiend. And again, if these are larger or smaller, you can change the size of the tokens when you pull them in. And then you can throw your friendlies there, your, uh, your players there to go fight them. So that's how quick and easy it is to set up a scene. Some of the controls that you may find useful is to move the board around. If you're on the grab tool, uh, you can hit W to move to this tool and you can just left click and drag the screen around. If you're on any of the other tools and you want to, the scroll wheel, if you hit that in, it will grab it and you can look around. Scrolling in and out obviously changes the zoom. And so this would be the select tool so you can select multiple tokens. They even have some, <laughs> some kind of cool features. Yeah. I don't know why I'd want to lasso to select things, but I, it could be cool. I mean, I could see it being useful. So that's how the move and the select tool work. Fog of War is uh, very easy to use, but is probably the most complicated thing on here. This button right here will fill it with fog, so players would not be able to see anything right now. And this is a preview button, so this is what your players would see. Enable fog cutting. That now means when you draw, it's going to reveal. So... Now this is what your players see. I just controlled Z to get rid of it. They have the polygon tool. So if you have specific shapes for some reason, very easy to use. And probably a better example if I pop over to a scene with a building. So let's go over here. And let's say we're just looking down here. So you could fill it with fog of war so that uh, the players can't see anything while you're building the scene. Then you might go over to the polygon tool and you might just click all of the corners and say they can't actually see what's inside the building. So you draw that, the fog is now there. So when you unfill, remove the fog fill, they still cannot see what's in the building. So building is now hidden. And then as, a, so let's turn this cut tool off and then maybe they walk into the main area of the tavern. Fog already exists here, enable multi-level. You just click this little button right here. This enables you to do layers. And now this is what your players see. So this is Fog of War made very easy. They have a couple of the different tools that I encourage you to play with before you jump into it, but it's pretty simple. You can also draw. That's always useful from time to time, pointing out where walls or different things are. They also have a measurement tool. Uh, the props can be kind of useful when measuring out who all is inside a fireball or, you know, a cone. And again, you can resize them. So we can drop it down to 15 feet if you want. And then anyone inside of it gets hit by whatever this cube spell is. They have a laser pointer. It's kind of pointless because uh, when you click on it, you can left click in laser pointer. But as you see, I have the hand selected. All you do is right click and it uses the laser pointer. Laser pointer is very useful for pointing out, you know, like, hey, I want to sit in this chair or there's somebody that comes through this bar. Yeah, whatever. You can point at things on the map. Something that you will definitely want to know, though, is inviting players. Click right there. Bam. Link. Send that link to your players. And what's really cool is they don't even need to make an account. If they make an account, they can join as you would expect. But if they don't make an account, here, let me, let me show what that looks like. They can enter a nickname click ask to join and then they will look at this from your screen you will see this pop up and you can admit them and bam one of your players 
has now entered. Something else that's really cool, and one of my favorite features of this, and why I think it just works so, so well. All too often, your players, as wonderful as they are, may not have a computer or access to a computer at the time. Maybe they're like, hey, I'm stuck somewhere else, so for like 15, 20 minutes, whatever, I'm not going to be at my computer. Uh, not a problem. Not a problem at all. All right, so I just clicked to join from my phone. I'm using the random nickname it gave me. And all I did was on my phone, click the link, and it pulls it up. And it, it pulls it up. You can zoom in. You can, from my phone, I'm just going to click to roll a d20. And right there, I rolled a d20 from my phone. I'll click to roll a d6. Rolls a d6. You have access to everything. It actually works on phones, which is just really cool. I don't know why it's so complicated for some of, like, Foundry and Roll20 both kind of suck if you have to join from a phone. And I don't know why it's so complicated to allow people to move around on the map like this lets you do but so anyway yeah you can play from your phone tablet whatever the main thing with this is it is just all about ease of use it is it is so easy to use and it's free which just blows my mind you don't actually have to spend any money if you actually if you already have the books don't need to spend any money you can just operate off of this which is which is real nifty so there you go, Albear Rodeo is the best free way to play D&D &D online, in my opinion. If you're not very tech savvy, this is a great option. If you don't want to spend money on a full VTT like Roll20, Foundry, Fantasy Grounds, this is another great option. Uh, this is, it's just a great option. I, I'm shocked that they have free VTTs like Albear out there because it just works so well. If you found this video useful, give it a like. And subscribe if you want more tips, tricks, tools for running awesome online D&D games. Thanks.